views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. When you add be you plus live your purpose, what do you get? Joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that you're meant to use to make the world a brighter place. Have you ever wondered, is this all life has to offer? There must be more. If you answer yes, then Unstuck Joy is the show for you. Each show will feature a memoir artwork painted by Vicky that taps into universal themes of evolution, hope, inner strength, and self-growth. Vicky will also ask listeners to play along, draw, doodle, collage, write, and or paint your way to soul clarity with art vision journaling. Unstuck Joy will compel you to tune into your soul's whispers to realize your unique dreams. Get ready to get unstuck. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Unstuck Joy, the art of living on purpose. I'm your host, Vicki Todd, and I would usually say we come to you each first and third Tuesday, but this is my last episode of Unstuck Joy. I'm moving on to other projects, and I just want to say that this has been an awesome year of doing the show. Thank you. Thank you to everyone at Transformation Talk Radio. They have been so super to work with. Thank you to all my wonderful guests over the past year and for all of you who have been listening and playing along with us. And if you want to catch up on the whole year, you can go to my website, vickyworldart.com. Go to Art Visioning. Underneath that is Art Vision Prompts. And they have them all listed um, for the Art Vision Prompts for each show that you can do. There's instructions. And there's also YouTube videos for each show. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to talk to my guest today, transformation coach Joanne Chin. And Joanne helps women who are professionals and entrepreneurs to kick that really bad habit of perfectionism to the curb and live more meaningful lives, just really live out their gifts more fully. And Joanne has forged her own path. Um, She's an Asian American immigrant who didn't quite fit into the traditional role. And so she just created her own thing. And that's what she's here to help us do by tapping into our creativity and intuition. Thank you, Joanne. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so thrilled to be here. I want to start by giving you an applause. Yay, a round of applause. <laughs> Woo! For a glorious yeah. fun. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Well, before we, before we get to the first question, I want to let everyone know what I'm doing today. Um, a friend has sent me an article about doing a sigil which I had never heard of before. And so my interpretation of it is that instead of having New Year's resolutions that I want to go to the gym, I want to lose 10 pounds, you know, you create symbols based on what you want to manifest or be during the year. And so like the star, I want to put my art first this year, um, tap into my intuition with the third eye. Um, The feather is to really tap into my wild woman spirit, you know, and the little fire is to tap into that inner wisdom. And so it took two or three tries, but you know, I put all 10 of my little symbols that mean something to me in a cohesive design. And so I have instructions on my website of how you can do that. So today I'm going to do a slightly different version that we'll revisit at the end. So cool. That's beautiful. I know. It was really fun to do that and think about what do I want and now what symbol does that, you know, go with. Okay. So I love your thing about kicking perfection to the curb, and that's been a lot of your own journey. Yes. So can you, can you kind of explain what that journey looks like for you? Sure. I'll give you the digest version. Okay. So I, yeah, so this is my story of how I have let go of perfection, perfectionism. Uh, I was originally born in Taiwan, and I immigrated to this country when I was nine. We were in the Midwest. And as a nine-year-old, I found myself facing a lot of racism and bullying in school. 
Yeah. So that was, yeah, so that was the beginning of my journey here. And I, from that time, which was very tough and emotionally, it, it was an emotional time. But for the longest time, for years after that period of time, I wanted to perfect my English right. because I, I wanted to fit in so badly. Right. right. So that was one piece of the puzzle regarding this whole thing about wanting to be perfect. And then at the same time, I also grew up with a lot of family expectations on my shoulders. Um, our version of the perfect successful life was to get great education, go to prestigious schools, get a PhD or an MD. And if you can't do that, then you marry someone who's either a PhD or an MD or a podiatrist and, and then have kids, have a big house and live happily ever after. So I can tell you that my journey, which is ongoing, hasn't turned out exactly that way. But can you imagine, can you imagine that I was putting a lot of stress on myself to be that perfect Joanne, right? right. So then fast fit into yeah. that very specific box that your family was expecting of you. And that just seems so heavy mm -hmm. to, you know, have that as growing up and going into college. That just seems really heavy. Yeah. And I knew that they came from a really loving place, but when, Interesting you mentioned college because that was when I started to question this whole notion of a perfect, successful life. Okay. I began my journey of um, spiritual and personal development because I wanted to figure out what is it? I mean, what is my path, right? right? So after I graduated from college, I got into the corporate world, worked in different jobs, and then I started exploring different interests like theater and improvisational comedy and public spe speaking with Toastmasters. So you could right. say I led a double life. So yes. during the day, I was this mild-mannered administrative assistant. And at night or at other times, I was this lively, creative Joanne. Right. And, and then I go ahead. totally yeah. get that. I you totally know, like... get that. Yes. Because, yeah. you know, that's how I felt as public relations professor for 17 years, but really all I want to do is go home and paint. And then it gets frustrating because, you know, you don't have time to do what you really love to do. So I exactly. totally, I love that you said that you're living kind of a double life. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And I also went to graduate school and I did the academic thing, but yeah. over time as I continue my exploration as a seeker, as a performing artist, um, as a person struggling to find her way in the corporate world, Right. Things start to happen, and then these different paths start to merge. Okay. And, and I'm sure we'll talk more about the couple of different particular events. But basically, because of my experiences, I really feel like I'm here to help people blossom, to right. help them discover their gifts, their message to the world, and help them bring those out so that they can live fulfilling lives and help others do the same. Right. And that is the most beautiful thing for you to realize that you're using your journey, your struggles, the successes along to say, hey, this is my goal in life. This is my purpose is to help others do the same thing. And that's where the sweet spot is to l learn it for yourself, but then also use yeah. it to help others, too. And that's what Unstuck Joy is all about. So I love that. Um, okay. So what what lessons did you learn along this journey that you thought, oh, okay, this is good. Here's tip number one. Tip, tip number, number one. Two. Yeah. Yes. So a big tip I have for all of you is to think about your journey as filled with gifts. Okay. Okay. So I know that we've all gone through emotional, traumatic experiences some of, some of which are still living within us in our yeah, bodies, right? right. And, and that means when we have new opportunities, and that could be new opportunities in career or business, in dating, that there'll be these negative voices or that negative emotions that come up that kind of tell us to stop 
and take notice or stop, don't continue. And so are those coming okay. from like your family saying, no, you need to be a certain way and your heart is saying, no, I need to be somebody else or just your own self doubt. Where do those negative voices come from? It's a combination. It's a okay. combination. And what I found is that some of the voices you can boil it down to a couple of um, particular doubt, particular questions that come out. So, okay. so some of the questions could be, you know, I don't want to, or statements, I should say that I don't want to be disappointed again, mm. or I don't want to be hurt again. Right. Right. So if you've majorly invested in a relationship or in a business venture, you lost a relationship or you lost money, then you're going to be storing some of these emotions and in here. And so next time you have a, another opportunity to grow, to take a risk, you're going to have doubts. You're going to have fears come up. Right. Right. Because that negative stuff we seem to hang on to more than the joy and the little, you know, lights of success. Uh -huh. um, okay. So we're about to our first break. Um, how can people get in touch with you? And I know that we're going to talk about it later, but you have sure. a really cool handout for people called, what is it yes. called? The Wheel of the Life. Wheel of Life. Yes. Yes. And so how can people get in touch with you, see what your services are, ask you questions and get that source of the Wheel of Life? So my website is called is www.joanne, J-O-A-N-N-E, T as in Tom, Chen, C-H-E-N.com. Okay. And you're going to find all the information on the homepage and which will direct you to other pages on my website. Okay. And we'll get more into it after the break, but can you give sure. us a little snippet of what the Wheel of Life is all about? It sounds really like dramatic, like a soap opera, the Wheel of Life, but what, yeah. is, it, what is it for? It's a, it's a tool that's going to help you take a look at the big picture view of your life to see where are you happy about and where's, what are some places that are not working for you. So you can kind of get your juices going in terms of making changes to your life. Okay, so you can kind of pinpoint, yeah. and you have categories yes. listed on the wheel. Sure, and I have an yeah. example I can show. Okay, cool. Okay, well, we're going to take our first break, everybody. This is Unstuck Joy. I'm your host, Vicki Todd, and we are talking all things transformation with transformation coach Joanne Chin. We'll be right back. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Have you ever said to yourself, I need to let this go? While the phrase sounds effective, what does it actually mean? How do you let something go? Hi, I'm Eve from Elite Tarot, host of the weekly show, Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. As an intuitive coach and professional tarot card reader, I work with clients worldwide on using energy effectively to embrace joy. Here's an idea when letting something go. Find a time you won't be disturbed, and just between you and the universe, handwrite a letter sharing all your feelings of anger, hurt, and sadness. At the end, write, however, I choose to live my life with love, joy, and strength, and so for all that, I release you. After you sign your name, immediately shred the letter noting how your body physically feels as you release something that you've been carrying for oh so long. If you'd like to schedule a session, please visit my site at EliteTarot.com. That's E-L-I-T-E-T-A-R-O-T.com.
Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Best-selling author, spiritual life, and business coach Joe Nunziata brings his higher energy and no-nonsense style to people who are ready to make powerful changes now. Wake up, step up, power up with a shot of Joe. Join Joe the second and fourth Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern for 30 minutes of high energy, no-nonsense, and powerful tools to make powerful changes. Visit JoeNuns.com. That's J-O-E-N-U-N-Z.com. Everybody. Welcome back to Unstuck Joy. I'm your host, Vicki Todd, and we are talking to transformation coach Joanne Chen. Okay, so during the break, Joanne told me that she has a really cool exercise to share with us, and so take it away, Joanne. Okay, so before the break, I was talking about the gifts, gifts of our journey. So yes. one exercise that I like to prescribe to all of us, for those who want to engage in it, is to, which will help us reframe the pains from our past. Okay. okay. So the exercise. Wait, let's say that one more time. Okay. Reframe. Reframe the pains. Pains from our past. Our, right. Okay. I love that okay. word. Reframe. Let's reframe it. Okay. Yes. So it's really easy. All you have to do is take out a sheet of paper. Okay. And create a chronology of major life events that have happened. Both good and bad. Good and bad. And okay. I actually have an example of something that I did, which is a chronology. So I, I've done the exercise. Okay. And this is a great exercise for all of you who want to be speakers or authors. And after you finish doing the exercise, it's going to take you some time. could be a couple days. Go through and take a look at each one and ask these questions. Okay. So I have three questions for you. The first question is, what lessons can you take away from these past experiences. Okay. And the second question is, what have you learned about yourself, mm. particularly your gifts and strengths? Okay. And the third question is, how would you want to live the rest of your life? Ooh, that's a big one. Yeah, and what message do, would you like to share with the world? What's your mission, right? And then there's another question um, that, I've, I've talked to Vicki about the question is imagine that you have only one year to live. What would you do in that year? Right. That just, I know that I've heard that question before, but when you ask it, mm -hmm. you know, we were Skyping face to face that just, that just breaks it down. Yeah. And it's a great question to add to all the other questions because for the chronology and the three questions, once you finish that, so you get an idea of, okay, this is my mission. This is what I want to do. And then you ask the, the, the question about the one year to live that, that question, it's going to add another perspective. It's going to add urgency to, for you to fulfill your mission. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So do you mind sharing maybe one of the not so positive events on your list? Yes. Happy okay. Cause I, I know, okay. Cause sometimes, you know, when it's a really positive thing, that's easy to say, Oh, well, here are my gifts and here's what went, you know, really great. But it's kind of the not so positive things. And that's what I love about this and the word reframing, you're finding the silver lining and re reshaping it. So if you don't mind. Sure. Happy to share it. It's a, it was actually a major transitional point. So okay. I feel like Vicki, you're in a transition yes. transitional point. And um, I believe when I was in my either late twenties or early thirties, I was working at this not very interesting accounting job. Okay. And I was, I just felt like I wasn't really stretching myself. I wasn't growing. And what happened was the day before my birthday, I got laid off. Wow. And 
other people were were getting laid off. I didn't think that I was going to get, you know, I wasn't, you know, I was just kind of naive. I just thought I was going to be okay. Yeah. So I got laid off. And the same week, actually that weekend, I was going to fly to New York to attend my grandma's funeral. Oh, wow. So it was in December. I was, yeah, I was very depressed. But after I came back from the funeral, I decided to start afresh. So I sat down and re- really thought about, okay, I'm, the administrative boring job is gone. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Yeah. That's right. I started creating marketing material for myself, and I submitted them to two or three educational te- technology companies in San Diego. Mm-hmm. And six weeks later, the last week of January, I got a contract job in marketing. Wow. One of these companies. And then six months later, about six months later, I started my speech coaching business, uh, which, which was to help um, immigrants with their English. Yeah. So because of a majorly painful event, life was basically telling me that, Joanne, you got to stop doing what you're doing. You're not living your potential. So we're going to kick you out. So I got kicked out. And it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. And that, that I have to give you a round of applause, yay, because oh. <laughs> you didn't stay in victim, I know, yay. You didn't stay in victim mode. You know, you didn't say, oh my God, this is so awful, you know, this worst week ever and just let it keep going. It sounds like, you know, you regrouped and you asked the question, what are my gifts? What am I getting out of this and what can I give? And then you turn that into helping other people. So, yeah. yes. Everyone can awesome. do this. You can do it. Yeah. You, I feel like I want, what I want to tell people is that you are more than you think you are now. There's so Absolutely. much more that you can do and be. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I just went to um, a conference this weekend. It was a Northwest um, Tarot Symposium because I'm in a class to create my own Oracle deck with my artwork and totally new world for me. But that was one of the themes, you know, it was kind of a law of attraction type thing that as you think, so you do or, you know, that I'm quoting that awfully, but it was really that mindset. And that's what you're saying is, okay, this wasn't the best thing that you made me feel crappy at the time, but it turned into the best thing that could have happened to you. Yeah. And these events, think of a, think about that. Each of these events is serving you in some way, helping you get to the next level. Right. Choose right. to see them at, choose to see each one that way. Yes. To help you Keyword, forward. choose, choose, Keyword, choose to see it. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, how does how does this blend into you kicking perfection to the curb? Because I would think that when you're faced with such a drastic situation, you can't feel that you're in control and have everything from point A to Z exactly right. perfect in your hands. And so how did that play into you coming from this, I've got to be really perfect background? Well, that's the thing is I realize that I can't be perfect. And I, I've come to view that every person is perfect with unique mix of gifts. So what happened in a situation like that is you could be, you could stay paralyzed, you can make sure everything is in line, but when you have nothing, when everything's taken from you, you can start afresh. You can decide how you want to build your next thing, right? right. So why not make the choice of bring in more of your gifts? Even if you're a little scared, like, well, maybe I don't wanna be an artist uh, tomorrow. How can you, what can you do to just take a couple of steps, your first steps toward infusing your life with more creativity, more art, more joy? Yes. Small steps can make a big difference. Absolutely. And, you know, when you say gifts, I believe that we're all born with certain gifts. You know, art is one of my things that, you know, I was born with, but it kind of got pushed to the back burner. And so what do you tell people when they say, I don't know what my gifts are? And, you know, yeah, I like doing um, dance or, you know, writing or whatever when I was a little kid, but I'm not really doing that now. How Mm -hmm. can you help them to transition into using whatever their gifts are? Well, one thing I one thing I suggest is to 
to have schedule some time for yourself. Mm -hmm. I know as givers or oftentimes as over givers where our attention is always outward. We're helping right. all these people, our family, our friends, our business associates, and we're, we're, our attention is on all these tasks. But sometimes we don't even make time for self-care, time for yeah. creativity, exploration. So schedule a time where you can really slow down and think about, hey, maybe I want to take a, want to be an artist like Vicky or start taking a class again. And I think about not really just go and take a class, but how can you apply what you learn from taking a class? How can you apply it immediately to your life? How can mm. you be more artistic? You don't mm -hmm. have to wait. You just have to be either I'm an artist or not, or I'm just taking a class on the side. And then the rest of the time, I'm not being an artist. You could start infusing, right? Have that mindset, have that, adopt that, put on the hat of an artist. Yeah. So it can happen right away. You don't have to wait 10 years to figure it out. Yeah. And that's a great word, infusing, because, um, you know, something like I'm going to be an artist or I'm a writer, that seems like there's such a product attached to it. But there's a ton of things that you can do in your daily life to add in a little bit more creativity or, you yeah. know, just take 15 minutes a day or how you dress or, you know, whatever that gives you that kind of je ne sais quoi of being an artist, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess what we're talking about here is kind of expand our mind to new possibilities of being an artist or writer. There's so many different ways that we haven't even thought of. Yes. Right. And the cool thing about today, there's so many online resources. You know, you don't have yeah. to find a class at your local college or whatever. There's so many outlets out there that you can do, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Okay. So um, we need to take another break. Tell us again your website and how okay. people can get in touch with you. The website is Joanne, J-O-A-N-N-E, T as in Tom, Chen, C-H-E-N dot com. Okay. And you've got your events and um, the Wheel of yes. Life download I and have, all that. I have a, I just uh, booked a venue for our event in May, May 3rd. It's going to be a TED, TED Talk style event. And we're thinking about live streaming at least part of it. So if Ooh. you, if you come to our website, you can. Uh, download some tool. Uh, there's a free tool you can download, which we're going to talk about. And then you can join my newsletter and I'll send out details about the event. Okay. Awesome. That's Thank great. You. That's, that's really fun. Okay. Um, we're going to take a quick break, everybody. This is Unstuck Joy. I'm your host, Vicki Todd, talking all things transformation with Joanne Chin, and we'll be right back. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Amber Teal, founder of The Healthy Edge, is bringing you the hit show Healthy Edge Radio, living with power, passion, and purpose. Amber provides the support and tools necessary for you to finally release the weight and emotions that are hidden beneath the weight. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information on how you can take the next step with Amber, visit GetTheHealthyEdge.com. Your happiness is your choice on Natural Peace Radio. 
follow Sarah Van Ryswick as she addresses the power of emotions. Each month, Sarah covers different topics as she helps listeners activate their energetic spark and create powerful energy and amazing opportunities. Manifest your desires with Natural Peace Radio. For more information on Sarah and her work, visit naturalpeaceliving.com. Interested in deepening your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit www.esotericstudies.net. The knowledge book currently studied in 39 countries and 15 languages around the world accelerates our evolution, takes us out of depression, offers universal truth, protects us, and makes us stronger, both spiritually and physically. So if you are interested in the knowledge book, visit usa.thenowledgebook.net and tune in to the Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasik on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Unstuck Joy. I'm your host, Vicki Todd, and we are talking to transformation coach Joanne Chin. Okay, so Joanne, we've talked about your experience with overcoming perfection, and you had the list of the great, the good, the bad, and the ugly experiences and questions to help you kind of see that in a different way and reframe it. Um, Going through this process, I'm sure that overwhelm is a huge thing because, you know, we I feel overwhelmed all the time and that can be something that can just stop you in your tracks. And so how, how does your transformation coaching help people get unstuck from that overwhelm spot? Okay. So I'm going to share with you another tool that you can download from my website, from the home page after the show. Okay. So I actually use this tool myself several times a year. Okay. And the tool is called, the wheel of life. Yes. Okay, so you can could, you could see it's a, it's a circle divided into different parts. And each part, each triangle represents an area of your life. Okay. Okay. Can you, can so, you read them out so we'll know sure. what it is? So the different areas are career, family and friends, significant other, romance, fun and recreation, health, money, personal growth, physical environment. And so a physical environment could be your car, your house, your office. So that's the eight. And I also suggest that if you see an area that doesn't speak to you, you can change it. You can write something else. Um, So when you have it, the exercise is go through and using your intuition, rank each one on a scale of one to 10 with 10 being you're the most fulfilled in that area. You can't be, you can't, there's nothing you want to change about it. You're on top of the world. Okay. So once you do that, I have a completed wheel filled out for you. Once you do that, you'll get a big picture view of how your life is looking. Okay. So this, for example, for this, the sample, you'll see that this person has a really low score of two, I believe, in the significant other romance area. Mm. Okay. So maybe this person is not dating at all, right? So if you're not happy about that, you want to change it, think about, okay, so then I don't want it to be a two. What's, what, how would, how, what would I like it to be? And then you say, okay, I want it to be an eight. Okay. So once you have that new number, write down what does that look like for you, okay, to raise it to an eight. And in some of the other areas, you may have to make some adjustments. You may need to make more time for dating, right? So that's, so anyway, so this is an example of, you can take it, look at all the areas in relation to each other. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So let me ask you a question. So um, let's say that this is my wheel. And I have a two 
in you know the relationship, dating, significant, significant other, romance department. And so what you said, ask myself some questions of how I could bring it to an eight. And so could that be like, you know, you said creating more time to date, but also would it be ways, you know, maybe find a meetup group of, you know, um, a hobby or, you know, an activity that I'm interested in, or, you know, do I want to sign up for an online dating thing? Is it those types of questions? Um, So you're, so basically what you're asking is the question of how, how How are you going to raise it? Right. And the good thing about that word, how is that there are many choices, Mm -hmm. right? And I know that sometimes when we have too many choices, we get bogged down, we get overwhelmed. Yeah. So here's the thing. When you're embarking on a new adventure of raising your love life to eight, nine, or 10 level, it's fun. It's exciting, right? Yeah. So when, we, when you start doing research, when you brainstorm a list of activities or things you can do to meet that special someone, think of it as a new adventure, right? And as you're looking at the list, Which one really stands out? Which one gets you excited, get your juices flowing? Yeah. Because I can tell you that, let's say, if you just like hate online dating, your energy is going to drop. And so one thing you can do in that case is to, um, you could use techniques, you can raise your energy, you can change, you can reframe your thoughts about going to, going online dating, or you can pick an event that sounds really juicy to you. And I can give yeah. you an example. I can give you an example. Okay. So okay. let's say that you're on Facebook. And I guess I'm doing like a informal promo for this particular event. But I actually saw in January there was a Facebook event um, pop up. It was a post okay. on a Tantra speed dating event. Wow. Okay. Tantra and speed dating. Okay. PG rated. PG rated. Okay. <laughs> and it's <laughs> it just... Um, the event was about helping, you don't have to be spiritual, I don't think, to do this, but it's just helping people relate in different ways other than in a traditional speed dating setting. Right. So they make it really fun. You do different activities together. You laugh. And it's just so rewarding. And when I first saw it, I wasn't looking for a dating event to go to, but they spoke to me immediately and I wanted to sign up. Right. Because it's kind of different, unique. Awesome. So you, you really yeah. went and did that? I actually did it and it was such a spiritually fulfilling experience. And I, uh, yeah, a couple of days out of it, (laughs) but but, yeah, but the point, the point is that my intuition was just like, you should go. And so I I listened, I I just, I did it. And the event was so fulfilling itself that it didn't really matter too much how many days I get afterwards. Right. 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 And because that's what I was thinking when you were talking about it is, you know, you may not find the one, you know, through that that single event or whatever, but just opening your mind, opening that perspective to say, oh, this was fun. You know, what are the gifts or the sparkly parts, you know, that I can take and use in my life? That's awesome. And it kind of goes in kind of goes in line with that whole issue of overwhelm, because we have all these goals cheap, right? Sometimes we're so focused on the targets that we forget to stay present and enjoy the process. Right. Right. And I'm a true believer that if the journey to whatever you think your perceived destination is sucks, then probably when you get to that destination, it's going to suck as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so joy along the journey is super important. And you may find, at least sometimes I do, that I think I'm going to point A, but when you really get into this juicy journey and you're having fun with it, maybe you end up at point C. Yeah. And I could tell you in terms of making decisions, which is related to what we're talking about, getting clear and all that, is I would do the left brain way of making a list and rate each one at a point. I used to do that. Yeah. Or I would do the other way of how do I feel about each one? And oftentimes I would go with, if I, if I was being true to myself, I would go with my right brain or my intuition. Mm. And in terms of making decisions, I've made decisions based more on safety, based more on what's rational or what's, um, what makes sense. But there are decisions like what, which graduate school to go to, I made, I could have made the other way and 
could have ended up in a different place that was more conducive right. to my growth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The intuition, it really knows way more than sometimes we give it credit for. And I have to admit, you know, I've been one to say, oh no, that was just a crazy idea that I had. But if you're really feeling it, especially, you know, like in your power center, and it feels like, you know, oh, that sounds exciting, but yeah, it's kind of scary at the same time. That's the thing you really need to go do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Should I, is it time to share another tip? <laughs> um, we have, we have three minutes. So okay. if we can do three part of it. Yeah. Let's okay. go for it. So in terms of, um, that's, that's, I was going to give you guys, uh, I have a couple of different exercises, but I'll give you one. Okay. That's going to help me connect. Cause this is three oh. minutes till the next break. And then we still have more of the show so we can continue on the other side. Okay. So I'll give you a quick exercise okay. on getting in touch with your intuition. So one, one thing I, I've done and I've told people to do is to take about at least 10 minutes. It could be more mm -hmm. to meditate. Just be quiet with yourself. Yeah. And then when you're done, take out a piece of paper or a journal mm -hmm. and write the question that you want to ask your intuitive self. Another thing mm -hmm. you could do is you could write the question beforehand and then go meditate. And then when you open your eyes, answer the question. Yeah. It's really that's so that's I'm sitting with that. That is a very powerful thing because when you put the intention out there, you know, as a form of a question and really get tap in. I know that meditation is sometimes hard for people. So, you know, maybe they, maybe they could go do yoga or sometimes it's just, you know, being in the shower. It's like, oh, now I understand, you know, kind of That's sneaks right. in. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I, I have found recently that going to things like the sound bowl meditations or a yes. gong bath and writing mm -hmm. an intention down and then getting downloads during that sound, that's a really powerful way to get some answers that I wouldn't have come up with on my own. Yeah, that's really great. And what we're talking about here is quieting our critical yeah. mind Yeah. and then get access to our body, wisdom, and emotions, intuition. Intuition. I yes. love intuition. It's so powerful. Awesome. Okay. We need to go to one last break and we will be right back. This is Unstuck Joy. We are talking to transformation coach Joanne Chin. I'm your host, Vicki Todd. We will see you in a few minutes. What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Tune in to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio to harness your connection with the universe to effect change for optimal success and happiness. Name one of the country's top psychics. Eve now brings her insights and gifts to this weekly hit call-in show. Joined by visionaries, leaders, and gifted others, but mostly you. Jot it down. Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Hey, everyone. 
everybody. Welcome back to Unstuck Joy. I'm your host, Vicki Todd. We are talking to Joanne Chan about transforming. So, Joanne, can you share us some examples of your clients' stories of how you've helped them transform and get unstuck? Okay. So, two stories just came to mind. So, one is um, uh, a guy who was working, who was on the path of becoming part of the finance world, the finance industry. Mm -hmm. And after talking with me, he, he started sharing how he, his passion was to design roller coasters. <laughs> Whoa. I've yeah. never heard of someone say it was somebody has to do it. Cause we have them. Roller yeah. coasters. Wow. Yeah. And then, but uh, he, he told me that he didn't think that was going to work, that it wasn't practical, whatever. But after talking to me, he, he realized that he really wanted to do it. But then the next step was to talk to his significant other. And he turned out that his significant other, which later became his wife, supported him fully. Oh, wow. So, and that meant that he had to go and apply to another degree program, but he did it. And he's starting, I believe this semester, he's starting um, his schooling at this wow. well it's a well it's a reputable school in new jersey but he's doing it now so i'm just like yeah oh, that's so awesome well do, can you tell us what it was that working or working with him mm -hmm. how what how did you get that to blossom out of him well the the thing is what i do i do different things when i coach is i i use intuitive questioning Yes. I, I listen, I'm very empathetic, and I seem to have the ability to ask questions that get to the core of the issue. Mm. So I remember I was just asking different questions, and I was kind of challenging him to think bigger. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of hard for me to describe what I do, but other things I've done, which I kind of share with you guys, is I do, like, I have tools like the Wheel of Life. I do visualizations with people, I have different things, different, I give people assignments, challenges to help them get accountable, to keep accountable to their goals. Yes. So I do different things in my coaching, but what I do use is intuition. I yes. use a lot of intuition besides strategies and, and yeah. That's all. Can I, can I share my experience with working oh, yeah. with you? Sure. Okay. Okay. Cause you're okay. reminding me of stuff now. Um, okay. So, um, you know, I had never met Joanne in person. And so we decided that I would be her client for a session to kind of, you know, get to know her coaching style and to get to know her. And so when she says um, intuitive questioning, I think I actually told you that I think that's one of your superpowers because we would talk about stuff and you would say, mm. okay, I'm seeing this word or I'm seeing this <laughs> phrase. And it would be like, wow, you really hit the nail on the head with that. And that was right when I was thinking about doing writing monologues to go with some of my art pieces and performing it. And oh. you just reminded me, you said, close your eyes and visualize yourself on stage. And what do you have to give to the audience and what are they getting out of it? And that was really really powerful. And then with the accountability point, which it was, I was kind of nervous to do it, but um, yeah. it was right before Christmas and I was going to a couple of Christmas parties. And you said, I want you to introduce yourself as a playwright. And I was like, um, what? But I went and I did it and I tried it out on a friend first. And she said that I did the superwoman pose and I didn't mean to do it, but I had to step into that power. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then later, you know, people were so interested and then it made it easy for me to say, oh yeah, I'm doing this, you know? Mm. And so mm, that, that's your gift to really get this intuitive stuff and help people but when you said you, with the roller coaster guy that you helped him kind of dig, dig, dig into yeah. bigger stuff, you absolutely did that. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing that came to mind as you're sharing your wonderful discovery story is that when we're thinking about changing, that we want transformation, but we don't know exactly how to get there. We may have a goal or like a fuzzy vision of it, right. but the key is to get clear on the vision and to figure out the first step or the next, a couple of steps that where you can start making it happen. But what's important is to start adopting the identity that you yes. want. So yes. that's what you did is you, you just, I am a playwright. I'm going to introduce myself as a 
as such, here's my business card. I haven't finished my writing my play, but I'm just going to do it anyway. And then you just stepped out. You were confident. You had the, as you said, you have the super, the Superman, Superwoman pose mm -hmm. and you did it. Yes. And people, yeah, you were in your yeah. power stance and people were riveted. They wanted to know more. Right. And then, then some of them gave me suggestions like, oh, you know, when you go do this, have someone videotape you on your phone so you can turn it into a YouTube channel to either promote yourself or study yourself. And so it would turn into this interactive thing. And it was really, it was very worthwhile because I think when we had done our coaching session, I was like, um, but I've only written one monologue. I'm not really a playwright. Who cares? You know, now I've written several and yeah. I'm going to open mics and performing them. So maybe not play right yet, but hey, I'm getting there. Yeah, and I want to encourage you and everybody out there is to claim, claim your place in the world as the gift that you are. Could be claim, a playwright. Say that, say that again. Claim own your it. what? Really own, really own it. Claim your place in the world as the gift that you are. Wow, that's so powerful. Yes, and that takes courage to claim that. But I can see that roller coaster guy. He probably had that dream just way down in there thinking, oh, you know, that's silly. I'm going to sound stupid. You know, that can never happen. And somehow you t kind of teased it out of him. And look what he's doing now. Yeah, and then what you did, you, you took the first steps and opportunity, just like ideas, more ideas came out. The universe is presenting you with opportunities to present yourself as a playwright. And maybe at first, when you're presenting yourself, you may not be, you know, 100% confident. But as you do more and more of that, you're going to be, your power is just going to just come right out. You're going to open the floodgate for your power to go, to come through. Yes, yes. And you had a phrase I'm looking at the notes that you sent me um uncover the truth buried in your heart yes that's such a beautiful phrase and so this is what you're talking about is that little thing that's tucked way behind there that's your gift right and as you're thank you for reading it and as you're reading reading it I'm hearing it I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of kind of a feeling like I'm choking up like I'm choked up it's coming the feeling is coming around something deep in my stomach. And I just feel like having been there, you know, in that place where yeah. I was hiding, I really want to help people to just fly free, you yes. know, heal, really try to heal from the hurt from your past so that you can fly free. Absolutely. And the, just the joy that you exude when you're talking about this, you know, hello, A, it is totally your gift and B, People should see really great to work with you because you have mm. such a nurturing um, way about you. Even if you're pulling out these kind of uncomfortable things, you have a way to help people do that in an easy manner. That's awesome. Um, we only have a few minutes left of the show. Can you okay. give us one or two tips about accountability? Because with all of this stuff to transform, you have to have accountability. Okay. So one thing that... I feel like I'm, I'm going to give you guys a tip that's more fun. That sounds more fun, okay. more exciting than let's keep you accountable is to regularly design challenges for yourself. Okay. okay. And that means like what I, what I give um, Vicky a challenge, right? Just give yourself mm -hmm. a big, scary goal that seems impossible right now and have a deadline to achieve it. So right. I'm going to share with you an example from my life is that last year I set the big goal of contacting 20 or 22, I think it ended up being 22, but my goal was to contact 20 groups or radio shows, just submit emails to, to pitch my talks, right? So when I had one week to do it, I had to do research, I had to tailor my emails and I was so stressed out, but I did it. So I actually did it for, I sent out 22 messages requests and I ended up getting four responses and one was from you, Yay. right? So because I did that crazy one week challenge, we're talking right now. I'm sharing my message with yes. the world. Yes. So in terms of achieving goals, make it something really exciting that you 
that you want to accomplish within the short time. Don't say, okay, I'm going to achieve this goal, you know, like a, like a amorphous goal, you know, fuzzy going one year, like make something, make a concrete goal that you can achieve within a short time and make it a process goal. Because you may not, let's say if I said, you know what, I want to have 10 interviews scheduled. What if I only have, you know, I have four scheduled, but my goal was process oriented. Right, right, just to do it, just to yeah. go through the process of sending the emails and doing it. Well, hey, yeah. we, we've only got a minute left in this show. This okay. is what I did, everybody. It's, um, this was my symbol at the very beginning of the year. It's kind of a free-to-be symbol for me. And all 10 of my sigils I just put in a celebratory circle to say yay 2018 and yay to this process of digging into who I want to be. Now, um, we have less than a minute left. Tell us about our Facebook or your Facebook group that people can get an interaction with you. It's called Embracing the Entrepreneurial Spirit. You can get to it from my homepage. There's a link there. It's for people who want to step out and share their gifts with the world, conquer their fears, and it's free to join. And we have people anywhere who, we have people who have had their business for 20 years to people who just started their business. So it's free mm-hmm. to join and we'll, I, we'll continue the learning, the conversations in that group. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Joanne. This has been a great, I don't have a wine glass, but I have water. <laughs> I will say clink. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you and I appreciate you being my guest on the show. You're a gift. You're a gift. <laughs> We're You're gift. a gift. <laughs> Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Unstuck Joy. And like I said, go to my website, vickyworldart.com, Art Visioning. Under Art Vision Prompts, you can see all of the past episodes of Unstuck Joy, including today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joanne. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> You've been listening to Unstuck Joy, the art of living on purpose with Vicki Todd. This hit show is where your higher purpose is revealed and cultivated. Now you too can share your unique light and special gifts with the world. Vicki's dedication to raising your life's purpose to something extraordinary is unending. So don't miss out on your opportunity. Catch Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd and Dr. Pat Basili. For more information about Vicki and her work, go to VickiWorldArt.com. That's V-I-C.